All right. Here we go. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my live unboxing of the Asus Tough Dash F15. This is a pretty freaking epic budget mid-range gaming laptop. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, checking this out because, yeah, uh, it, it's one of the best bang for the buck machines out there almost for sure. But I'm I'm not sure. We're going to have to find out how good the build quality is today, what the response rate of the display is. Um, and keep in mind that this does have only a four core Intel in it, not a six or eight core, even though it says it's an i7. So. Sweet. So, uh, so yeah, this is a ten ninety nine dollar Asus Tough Dash. So we're going to be comparing this. I, I'm going to be comparing this in a full review with the Gigabyte uh, G5, which also costs ten ninety nine. Um, so this is going to be really, really interesting. I'm not going to be comparing much in this video. Maybe just briefly, I'll kind of get both laptops out because I already did an unboxing, uh, an overview of the Gigabyte G5. But yeah, so we're going to, this is just kind of a preliminary warm up uh, where we let everyone hop into the stream. Um, and so where we're waiting for everyone to get into the stream, if you can drop a like uh, and yeah, like if you want to drop a like, that'll help my channel out. Um, I also want to briefly mention that I also have a link in the description down below. If you want to support my channel, if you decide this laptop is right for you, you can buy through that link. Uh, and it does go in and out of stock fairly often. This laptop um, is basically like one of the really popular laptops this year. So it'll like come into stock for a couple of days and then go out of stock for a little while and come into stock. So if you keep checking the link, it'll probably come back into stock fairly often. Now, um, yeah. So let's do this. Let me let me give let me go grab the G5 while we're waiting for everyone to hop in. Oh, and I just grabbed my phone. I'm not sure where I put it. All right. Well, what's up? Davi with the super chat. Thanks so much. All right, so let's, uh, did you guys get notifications on this live stream? All right, Nerdy Dan, you have a good, you have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Um, is Asus laptops any good? This will be my first time buying a gaming laptop because I wanted to use it for both working and gaming. Um, yeah, Asus laptops, I think, are one of the best right now. Um, but it's just going to depend on which model it is, how expensive it is, because some of them are better bang for the buck than others, but it's one of the top brands. Okay, so you guys got notifications? Cool. Let's do this unboxing. Let me go ahead and get it kicked off with a official intro. So, uh, so this is where the VOD will start, basically. Do do do. What's up, and welcome to my live unboxing overview of the ASUS Tough Dash F15. So, this is one of the premier uh, ultra portable-ish. Lame gaming laptops, I mean, this isn't, isn't like super, super portable because it is a 15-inch chassis, but it's still very thin, very light. It only costs $10.99, and it's a fully-featured gaming laptop, but it is only a 4-core Intel, so that's one of the downsides. Uh, and we're going to have to see if the 4-core Intel holds this laptop back at all uh, in some preliminary tests. I will be testing Time Spy, 
and Cinebench in this video, as long as driver updates and the laptop's fully functional, all that. I'll also take the bottom off so we can take a look at the thermals on the inside. Um, and yeah, and then I'll also be doing some driver updates, Windows updates uh, before we do those tests. And then I'll just interact and answer questions and chat the whole time. Um, it'll probably be an hour to two hours. We'll see how long it takes to do everything this time. Um, just depends. Let's go ahead and get this unboxing started, see what's included in the box, and we'll go from there. What's up, Steven? See you from uh, owner just owned us here. It will be interesting to see if this is any better than the 3070 one that I tested. Yeah, well, I imagine it'll be worse than the 3070 version that you tested because the 3070 version, um, you know, costs more and is a more powerful GPU. But the bigger thing is because this one's like $350 cheaper, is it just better bang for the buck? Like if it performs similarly as the 3070 version, then it probably is worth getting, you know, because it's so cheap. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's what you meant. Nice. Okay, so we've got a, we open it up. The laptop does not pop up. It's the only reserved for the fancy boxes, I guess, from Asus. <laughs> so we've got this uh, cloth sleeve for the laptop. Boom. Okay. Very nice. I got to say, the initial impression of holding the laptop in your hands is very, very positive. This thing feels quality. You know, it doesn't feel like a more budget oriented machine at all, at least on initial impressions. The top lid, I really like the uh, the design here. It's very clean looking just with the TUF on this side. And we got a little uh, logo thing on this side. I'm not sure um, if you guys can see that, uh, but but yeah. And now for our under ventilation, we've got, I think speaker grills holes right here, looks like, uh, and fan intake here, fan intake here. Uh, and you can kind of see down in here, there's probably another way for the fans to get some air some airflow in there. Um, not a ton of air ventilation, but hopefully it's enough. Yeah, I got you, owner. So you're saying that yours is about as good as a 2060. I think that'll vary a lot depending on which 2060 you're talking about. Cause you know, if you match this up with say the Asus Zephyrus G14 from last year, um, you know, that's a lower wattage 2060, but if you've matched up with say a Legion 5, 115 watt 2060 it's probably not going to do as well so it's just going to vary a lot um, but the big thing in my mind is the price point especially of this unit is so attractive at 1099 let's open the sucker up you know there's just a lot of bang for the buck for this machine wow that is a really good first impression um, for as far as design layout uh, we've got these like crisscross patterns right here uh, let me see what the camera is seeing. Um, let me kind of hold it up to the camera a little better. This thing is fairly light. It's not like super thin and light though. Like if you're looking for something super thin and light, this is still very portable. It's very similar to the Zephyrus G15. But but yeah, like this thing's a little bit bigger than I imagined it when I was seeing it online. But it's still, it is very thin. Um, okay. So... One thing that's certainly nice about this one is we got Thunderbolt 4, um, which is one of the first laptops to ever have Thunderbolt 4, though Thunderbolt 4 is basically the same speed as really fast Thunderbolt 3. Uh, then we have Wi-Fi 6, 3200 megahertz RAM DDR4, uh, and I believe it's the 16 gigs. We do have USB-C power delivery charging, so you can use a USB-C cable like this one off of a USB power brick, and you can just charge this laptop and power it from that, uh, at least under light loads, probably not under full gaming loads. If you plan on doing any dedicated GPU test to bypass Optimus, you need to go to the BIOS and switch the HDMI to the, in the from the integrated GPU uh, for the 3060. Yeah, I saw that on your video. That was really interesting, Stephen. That you have to do that in the BIOS. That you can. It's interesting that you can even do that in the BIOS. I didn't, that's the first time I've seen that. Um, though I imagine other manufacturers have probably done that. Let's go ahead and check out what else is in the box. Um, I imagine we've got a power brick in here somewhere, right? Um, okay, so. We've got our warranty card right here. So this should come with, I think, a one-year warranty from Asus. A little uh, guide that says, press the power button. Comprehensive right here, okay? They don't want you to uh, miss anything, 
All right. Lift open the display panel. Press the power. Press the power button. Okay. I don't. I think that card is pretty unnecessary. Um. Okay. Pretty pretty hilarious. Congratulations on your Asus product purchase. Um, for your warranty, please contact uh, Best Buy or Asus for support. So you can actually go through Best Buy Geek Squad too if you're if you get this from Best Buy. Um, and I do really recommend the Best Buy uh, accidental warranty. So if you plan on taking this thing around, um, whenever I buy expensive electronics, like I bought my A7S camera right here from Best Buy, um, and whenever I buy an expensive electronic, um, I do usually try to buy through Best Buy so I just can get that Geek Squad protection. At least if it's a device that's likely to be dropped, because I've had to repair two different cameras um, and a couple tablets before in the past. One phone, yeah, I've, like five or six really expensive devices, and it's definitely paid off for me at least. But it, if you take really good care of your stuff, maybe you don't need to get that. Gizmo, can you read us the full warranty card? <laughs> I don't I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think you guys would uh, appreciate that. Uh, by the way, I did ship out the the giveaway winner, um, the Asus Strix G17. I shipped that out today. He was kind enough to let me keep it, hold on to it for an extra few days, uh, well, extra a couple weeks um, beyond when I was planning to ship it to him because I needed to do the memory tests on the machine, and then because I held on to it for a little while. Um, which he was okay with. I also offered to upgrade the RAM, so I upgraded the RAM for him to 32 gigs, taking the RAM out of my SCAR 15 and putting it into that Strix G15, or G17, I mean. Um, so this thing is surprisingly difficult to op open for some reason. Okay, very nice. Um, I gotta say, this cable, this is a nice quality power cable, but it's short. But it's very pliable, which is really good to know. Power cable. Um, what kind of wattage are we talking on this power brick? We got a 200 watt um, AC power adapter. So let me take this plastic off and then show you a close up of the power adapter. Hey, have you ever had any software issues with Geek Squad wouldn't cover? Um, so software issues? They I've only really dealt with Geek Squad for hardware stuff. Because software issues, I can usually figure out on my own just using Google. I guess I've never I've never gone to there for software support before, so I don't know how their software support is. <clears throat> okay, so take this off, plug this in here, and oh, this is interesting. It has a uh, it has a pattern design on the power brick. That's extra classy. The Scar 15 does not have that, and you can see right here it has 200 W, 200 watts on the power brick and this power brick is very portable and light and this should be plenty of power to support this system easily um, probably honestly more the power than the system will even draw i imagine the system will probably only draw 150 or something watts probably gives me you think this will be better than the gigabyte g5 in terms of gaming and cooling i don't know i don't think so honestly i think the gigabyte g5 is still going to be better um for raw performance it's hard to say the bigger thing with the Gigabyte um, G5, it, though, is is that um, you know it's not as premium of a of a build. Like, look at this thing. This thing is, this thing looks like it could be a two thousand dollar laptop. You know, um, at least on first impressions. Like, this thing is a high class, high quality, more premium product for sure um, than the Gigabyte G5. And it's not like the Gigabyte G5 is is bad. It's just the lines aren't as clean. It's not as thin. It's not as, I don't know if it's, they probably weigh about the same, but it, this thing is probably half the thickness or not half. You'll see in a second. I'll compare them once I get this box closed. I got the G5 right there. So, Whoa. so I'm in my mind, that's probably the biggest draw to the Asus Tough Dash. Not necessarily the performance. I'm anticipating the performance will be a little bit less than the G5, but we'll have to see. Maybe, maybe it will surprise me. I was blown away too when I got it in hand. Nice. I have the G5 and and that is all plastic. Um, yeah, the G5 is definitely a uh, a very budget build, but I think it's still like better than the photos. 
photos of the G5 look so bad. Uh, okay, I might have to take the headphones off to plug this in. Uh, come here. There we go. All right, we are plugged in. Let's fire her up. Ooh, we got this kind of turquoise backlighting. I wonder, can you change the color of the backlights? Because it would be cool if you could change it to white or something, but it doesn't look like it. Maybe you just got this uh, this green backlighting. But well, the green backlighting looks pretty cool, too, I think. Is this better than the G15? Uh, not sure which G15 you're talking about, the Strix G15 or the Zephyrus G15, but um, no, I, th I would think that the Zephyrus G15 and the Strix 15 both are a little bit better than this one. Um, but this one's cheaper, so better for your wallet. Probably not quite as good a performance, though. The Gigabyte Aorus 15P with the 130 watt 3070 is missing from your Excel sheet. Um, no, it's not. It's in there. Unless it got deleted, because I know I added it in the past. Okay, so let's do a let's do the good old pressure test. Bring this camera in a lot closer. Can you do a drop test? I was actually thinking about doing a drop test on this at some point. <laughs> I was like, this could be a fun laptop to do a drop test on because it's not too expensive. Um, and it's it's advertised as being extra durable, so, right? I just got the Strix Scar 15 based on your review. I love it. Thanks for the amazing review. Yeah, Zane, I really like my Scar 15. I've really been enjoying it. Okay, so let's do a uh, pressure test. For how uh, how bendy this thing is. Okay, so going around the top, starting with, we got a little bit of bend, like a little, yeah. Then the middle here, we got some bandage, but I'm pressing pretty hard. Right side, no bend, no bend, no bend. Coming around to the front, let's move the camera a little bit so you can see a little better. Um, going around to the front here, no bending. Uh, we'll go to the middle in a second. All around the edges, so uh, just the the top middle is a little bit um, bendable. Going through the keyboard now. Minimal to moderate flex. Oh, I just did something. Let's go back. Yes, US is fine. Um, yeah, minimal flex on the keyboard too. This is a solid chassis, it feels like to me. Let's, yeah, so a little bit of a bendy lid, not quite as stiff as it's possible. You know, there's some lids that'll be more stiff, but that's a reasonably solid lid. Um, and the hinge is very stiff too. So that's a really good sign. Um, now, does this have the ergo lift thing going on here or no? No, this does not have any ergo lift. It does not lift the chassis up when you put it back. To be honest, I think this laptop is kind of worth if you want to do some medium gaming for school, uh, and for school, obviously, there are better options, but this one is way cheaper. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great option for people that really want something that's more premium and more portable. You know, as long as the performance is there as well, um, I think this is going to be really, really great. How many cores does this processor have? Uh, this processor has uh, four cores. And... So uh, it's it's four cores, but it's the new uh, Intel architecture. Um, so it's the new Tiger Lake architecture. So in theory, it's going to be more performance per core than the last generation. And it's got the new Superfin technology. I don't know. I still think it's not that much of a massive improvement on a per core basis. And it doesn't make up for having, say, an eight core system. Like an eight core system or a six core system will probably still do better in multi-core performance. Gizmo Slip Tech, keep up the good work. Loving your content. More Jared banter would be appreciated. <laughs> oh, man. I was giving Jared a hard time about his um, Intel versus AMD laptop processor comparison video. <laughs> I hope Jared doesn't mind. Uh, how about its thermals, sir? I don't know yet, Chi Chantola, because uh, we haven't done thermal testing yet. We're just got, we've just fired it up. We haven't got any drivers installed yet or any um, you know, test applications yet. Um, by the way, here is the, let's go ahead and just show you the G5 and the Asus Tough next to each other here. Uh, so there they are. 
side by side. They have the almost the exact same footprint lengthwise and widthwise. And then height wise, you can see there the, the, the tough dash is, is quite a bit thinner. Um, and I think that's going to be, honestly, if there was any one main draw to buying the tough dash, it's going to be this th extra thinness and more of a premium feel. Uh, but I think I think the ports are better on the Gigabyte. Probably better performance on Gigabyte because I think we have a higher um, wattage GPU. We also have a six core Intel on the Gigabyte. So if you're just after raw performance, I think the Gigabyte's still going to be a bit better. But we haven't done our test yet. That's just my guesses based on the on the raw specs. But you can see uh, most of the ports on the Tough Dash are on the left and the right side, or nothing's on the back. Um, whereas on the, the Gigabyte, we have another segment of ports on the back. So we just got quite a few more ports on the Gigabyte, more performance on the Gigabyte. Um, but it is a bit thicker. Um, they're the same price, though. So time to find out how the Tough Dash does. And actual performance, though. More lighting, please. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's probably just because it's so backlit. Um, I can actually... Uh, doo -doo -doo. I can tune this up to be a little brighter. Hi, I bought a Scar 15 3070 making some creaking noise when lifting the screen. Is it normal? I'm not sure what kind of creaking noise. I have to see a video of it to be able to know. Um, so one second. Let me go ahead and... Aha. There we go. Now I can log in. Fading Godness, all you have to do to bypass is uh, use a USB-C to DisplayPort or USB-C to HDMI. Um, and that's it. So it, basically the, the key is you're using an external um, output for video that just goes straight to the NVIDIA GPU. And that's, and that's what's going to make it so that you're I'm um, going to have better performance. Ooh, the screen brightness is only at 50%. Makes sense. It was pretty dark. Now it's a lot better. I am going to focus again. I was typing in a password. That's why I... I uh, that's why I was doing the focus. Can you bypass Optimus with the ROG Strix G17 and the HDMI port? I don't think so, Rise. I think you have to go through the USB-C port, unless maybe in the BIOS you can switch it. Um, but I, I have not seen that option. But maybe there it's there, because um, you can do that apparently on this machine. I did not know that. So maybe it's that way on the Strix Series 2. I don't know. Is this the Zephyrus G15? No, this is the Asus Tough Dash. <clears throat> Do, do, do. What's better, the SCAR 15 Ryzen 7 or the Strix G15 Ryzen 9, both 3070? Um, well, they're going to be very close in performance. If it was me, I'd buy the SCAR 15 probably because of the better build quality and lighting and stuff. But um, the Ryzen 9 should, in theory, provide just a tiny bit more performance. Uh, I think most reviewers are saying about a 4% uh, performance increase. Okay, let me go ahead and... Move this camera closer so you guys can see the screen directly. Do, do, do. Uh, do, do, do. Hello, hello. How you doing? Okay. Oh. Okay. We're going to need to go like that. Like that. Like that. Yeah, like that. All right. <laughs> We're going to get it situated. There we go. All right. And we can make this less blurry. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, let's do a close up of the keyboard while we're waiting. So check out this keyboard. It's a nice keyboard. 
Okay. This thing feels great. It feels, I think, almost identical to the uh, Zephyrus G15 keyboard. It may actually be the exact same keyboard. Well, now, because we have different color keys here, but it's, I think it's the exact same layout. Um, and as far as backlighting goes, every key and secondary function is lit up as well, which is nice. So you don't have to fumble around for like where the, the you know, the money sign is or the percentage sign or something. Does it feel cheap? No, this does not feel cheap at all. Like this, I, if someone were to ask me how much this laptop costs, I like without knowing the specs on the inside or anything like that, I would guess this machine would cost probably fifteen hundred to two thousand. Because if I, that's like, like that's that's what I would guess, you know. And I think that's a really good thing, you know, because it's definitely not that way on all of the more um, budget and mid-range laptops out there. Tilting it down. There we go. Cool. How's that looking? Is that looking good? So the new Intel 11th gen is worse than the Ryzen 7 5800H on gaming. Um, that's going to depend a lot on what game you're playing. Um, we just haven't... And I, The thing is, too, these are... You say 11th gen, but uh, you know we've got a we've got six core Intel 11th gen laptop processors coming soon-ish. We don't know exactly when, but we know it's likely to happen. Uh, you know, sometime in the next month at least. And so you know, it's it's really it's kind of like one of those things we got. We've got to see what Intel comes out with. But if you're talking about like 10th gen, Intel 10th gen and Ryzen uh, 5000 series. They are very close in terms of just pure gaming performance. But in terms of everything else, they're not close at all. Like the thermals on the Ryzen are just way better. So you, your laptop's not going to get as hot. Um, and a lot of laptops these days share thermal pipes from the GPU and the CPU. So, you know, when you have better thermals on the CPU, the result is your GPU doesn't get as hot when it's a shared heat pipe. So I really, really like the Ryzen 5000 series for their thermals. Um, and I think that honestly allows you to push the GPU a little higher, especially with dynamic boost if you get thermal throttling, normally speaking. Um, bottleneck because of the four core CPU. Uh, Jetty Sanchez, I very likely, um, but it's going to vary a lot from game to game. It'll probably bottleneck the worst in games that can do multi-core rendering or multi-core performance. Um, I'm going to switch my mouse over to this machine. We got three USB A's on this thing. That's nice. All right, so first things first, we're going to turn off sync. Next, we're going to do, I think this is the Zephyrus background. Do they have a tough background? No, I guess not. I guess we'll just go with the Zephyrus background for now. All right, uh, now we got Windows. Scaling, make everything bigger, yes. Get back to 100%, so everything's sharp on the display. Let's start copying our benchmark utilities. <laughs> I gotta say the, the bezel right here, this bezel is very small going around the, the system, um, which is really nice to see. Reduces the footprint of the laptop, makes it look more premium. Do you think it's worth the money? I gotta do uh, some actual tests with it before I can know confidently whether it's worth the money, but uh, I'm thinking it's, like, we'll see. I'm thinking it probably is. If you want to, it's just going to depend on what you want in a, in a laptop, though. You know? So this is only a 512 gig SSD, which is going to be a challenge for me with all my benchmarks. Because uh, only having a 512 gig SSD means I will not be able to install all the games at once for my benchmarking live stream. Can this use a 4K monitor? Yeah, it's got a Thunderbolt 4. Um, it's got a Thunderbolt 4 uh, output. So you can use, I think, probably two 4K monitors with it at the same time, I would think, easily um, with that output. Plus, I think you have, uh, yeah, so we've got an HDMI 
that Thunderbolt 4. Um, and then on this side, we got two USBs. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could use probably two or three monitors, I would imagine. You, you have to get the right power adapter or the right adapters out to the, this monitor. I just want to congratulate you for all your videos and keep up the great work. Uh, thanks, uh, Petite Penner. Should I save up money and get this, or do you have another computer I should get? Uh, so V-Rex, um, up to you if you want to go for this one. Um, but like I like I can't give you an official opinion until I do more tests. But my initial impressions of the build quality and the look and the feel of this machine is is very impressive at least. Um, is it HDMI 2.0 or 2.1? I'm pretty sure it's HDMI 2.0. I think. Um, and I say that because. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's just we can just pop over into the ASUS's website and just double check. Uh, because ASUS does not have any 2.1s on any of the machines, I don't think. So this thing weighs 4.41 pounds. We should double check that. It's got a 76 watt hour battery. We'll check that when we open up the bottom. Yeah, it's HDMI 2.0B. But uh, the USB Type A's are 3.2, and then we got a USB C Thunderbolt 4, and that also doubles as a power delivery port. So very versatile um, port there. Are you going to do a gaming test this video? Yes, Mohammed. We're going to probably install uh, probably Valorant, I think, probably. Modern RTX 2060 laptop last year. Seeing this for 1099 gives me a heart attack burn, or give me heartburn. I paid 1899. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, laptops this year, like the budget end of laptops this year are just so good, I think. Um, especially when I look at something like the Gigabyte G5 in terms of just raw performance. I, I think I, I, I see the tough Dash F15 and I just think premium experience for the money. You know, that's kind of like what I, what I think of when I, when I see the tough Dash, you know, it's just, it's a different type of person that'll buy this versus the Gigabyte G5. The Gigabyte G5 is the kind of person that's just like, raw performance, yes, maximize the frame rates. And then this one's like, a uh, person that buys this is like, I want a laptop that just feels feels premium, feels good, is thin, um, you know. And like, that's kind of like, I don't know, that's kind of like the feel I, I get for, from this. Uh, like, just raw, you know, just like, just Raw, right off the top of my head. What can you say about the display quality? Okay, so taking a look at the display, I believe this is supposed to be only a... <sighs> Let me get Windows Update going too while I do this. Um, I believe this is supposed to be a 144 hertz. Let's just double check our display settings. And then, so yeah, 144 hertz, 1080. Um, it's hard to tell the color gamut. It feels like, oh yeah, the bright, by the way, the brightness on the keyboard was on low. <clears throat> I was able to make it quite a bit brighter um, from what you guys saw earlier. Um, now, overall, the display does not look bad. I just got to try it out in a game like Valorant to see what the response rate is and see if there's any ghosting uh, visible, you know? Okay, so I'm going to do my focus pull again here while I log in. Did I get it? Okay. Cool. Um, I got to say, first impressions of the display are good for the money. For 1099, that's a decent display. Um, it's definitely not like a top of the line display for the price point, but you're getting more performance, you know, specs on the inside. So they kind of they have to compromise somewhere, and I think that's kind of another advantage for the Gigabyte G5 is the display on the Gigabyte G5 is that you know higher refresh rate, 249 hertz or 240 hertz on the on the G5 um, for the Gigabyte, and then it's also just better um, color gamut probably as well, at least on paper. I think it's, okay, there we go. The nine key did not press initially. I had to push it down a little further. Let me test that. So it looks like, there we go. Yep, 
Yeah, it looks like the night key is just a little stiff. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I just kind of had to press the night key in a little bit. Now it's all warmed up. Well, let's get update going. Um, let me move the camera back a little bit. What kind of settings do you think you can get on PUBG? Uh, I'm not sure. You probably can get pretty good performance on PUBG, though. Probably around 100 FPS, I would think. Okay. Oh, man. That's a lot of Windows updating right there. That's a lot of Windows update. So we're going to let that go. Um, all right. Do you think the Ryzen 7 5800 beats the CPU that is inside this laptop? Yes. Mohammed, uh, the 7 5800H will crush this CPU and grind it into dust. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. Um, the, the In single core gaming performance, this thing actually might beat the Ryzen 7 5800H. Um, but in terms of multi-rendering performance and games that can take advantage of multi-rendering, like lots of cores, let's say in Battlefield 5, those games, the Ryzen 7 5800H will run circles around this machine. Um, but the vast majority of games are not optimized like that. So I wouldn't expect that kind of performance. Uh, I wouldn't expect that big of a performance difference um, in most titles, at least. Especially, obviously, GPU-bound titles is irrelevant. Um, because GPU bound titles, you're just not going to see that CPU bottleneck anyway. So it's just going to depend. This is the fastest single core chip in the world, I think. Um, it's going to be one of the fastest single core chips. So, so yeah, it's just going to depend a lot on what game you're talking, you know, or what task you're doing. Like if you're rendering videos, I guarantee you the Ryzen 7 5800H is going to be faster than this one. Um, but I mean, it's like probably like. 10 minutes versus five minutes or 10 minutes versus seven minutes in terms of render time, something like that. Uh, I don't know why. I hit the back button or something. So the nice thing about the nice thing about my Asus is uh, you can do a number of functions in this software, which you can't do in a lot of other um, applications, you know, like controlling applications um, from other companies. So, oh, yes. So look at this. Our warranty goes from till 2022 to 2021. Interesting. Even though we bought this, oh, it's because this has been sitting around for a week or two. That's why. TDP of the GPU, we can check that as well. But let me finish showing you this. Um, let me finish showing you the software right here. So this Asus, uh, this My Asus page, you can go into. There should be a. There should be a software update section. Okay, so here's the battery health section. This is what I'm going to show you as well. So you can set it so that it only charges to 80% or 60%. Um, and this is going to allow your laptop battery to maintain its battery health much longer. Like lithium ion batteries should be good for like 10 years if you maintain them closer to the 50% mark instead of at 100%. It's very damaging for lithium ion batteries to be at 100% all the time. So like with my SCAR 15, I keep it at 80%. I don't want to keep it at 100%. Um, it'll make it last a lot longer. So that's it. Like the battery in the laptop will still last a long time at 100% charge. Um, but it only lasts probably like a year or two. But if you set it down to like the 60%, I would think the battery in the laptop will last way longer. And then whenever you know you're going to need a long battery day, you can set it to this 100% the night beforehand or something. Um, and then you'll get, you'll extend the life of your battery. So, and batteries are, batteries are one of the biggest things that goes uh, wrong on a laptop. Like it's probably the most common component that breaks after two to three years. Um, and it's because it just sits there at that 100% battery juice. Please repeat that. Okay, Eric. So let me try to break it down as simple as possible. Um, all modern electronics use lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries, um, in theory, should last like around 10 years on average. They're designed to last a long time. 
But when you run a lithium ion battery and you're you're sitting at 100% nonstop, it can damage the longevity of the battery. Um, so does that make sense? So so my ASUS software in here, you can set it so that you don't charge to 100%. You can have it sit at 80% or 60% so it doesn't wear down your battery life sooner or preemptively. Um, and this is on all of the ASUS laptops. And a lot of other manufacturers are doing this now too, like in uh, the MSI laptops and the Dragon Center has this. So uh, it just depends. If you are constantly taking it off and on the charger, you can keep it at 100%. Um, but just generally speaking, I would recommend the 80% value unless you know you're going to be using battery all day the next day or something. Like you're going to go on a trip to the airport or something, then I would top it off at 100%. Um, plus the battery life in this is supposed to be like, crazy crazy good but i'm guessing it's probably like seven to ten hours uh depending on what you're doing that's my current guess based on what i've seen okay let's get 3d mark installing it looks like we're ready to restart as well um let's see how windows update is doing pending restart pending restart pending restart okay so we can get that restart going let's just get this let's get 3d mark downloaded and then we'll restart Okay, is this better than the Gigabyte G5 for productivity? Ibis, I don't know. Um, the Gigabyte G5, the Gigabyte G5 has a numpad, so I think for productivity, I'd probably go Gigabyte G5. Um, plus, the, the Gigabyte G5 also has the six-core CPU, so if you're going to do a lot of CPU rendering and stuff like that, you're still going to get more multi-core performance um, on that machine. I'm pretty sure, but we, we'll we'll do some tests here coming up. We're gonna run Cinebench once we get everything up to date. Up to date. So I think we're good to restart the machine now. How is the battery life on this G15 Strix compared to this? Um, probably they're both gonna be good. It's gonna come down to nitpicking, probably, Matt. Um, is the Omen available to order? The Intel version of the Omen 15 is available to order, the 15T. Um, the 15Z should come back into stock sometime probably in the next week or two. I did order an Omen 15Z, and it's supposed to be coming uh, to me on April 1st. So I would assume they're going to come back on order sometime before then or around then. Um, what are your thoughts on the no webcam? So my thoughts on no webcam. Ooh, nice. We're getting our BIOS update. Um, this is really nice. I love that Asus does this all automatically. So you don't have to go to the website and download it manually like most other. Okay. Clicking in BIOS is not working right now. Okay, I'm at. Do I just need to hit enter? Okay, we just hit enter. BIOS is upgrading. Do not turn off your computer. Okay, we're plugged in. We're plugged in. Okay, very good. What was I talking about? Um, thoughts on the no webcam, right? So um, I I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a guide for on how to use your smartphone as your webcam, um, and this is uh, a really really nice tool. And I can let me see. Let me pull the name of it up, and you can just you guys can check it out. But um, there's a free application called Droid Cam, D R O I D Cam. Um, it's an app on iOS, and it's an app, I think, on Android as well. Uh, so what you can do is you can just live stream over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or plug it in through USB. So you can do it when you're away from Wi-Fi too. Um, but it allows you just to use your high-quality smartphone camera as your webcam. I think it's great. because uh, And you can use the mic, I think, from your smartphone too. So you can like you know, have it close to you and have really high-quality audio. Um, and it's a really high quality camera, especially if you have an iPhone or a newer Samsung. Um, and then you're going to get a way better webcam than you would get anyway on, you know, uh, what's built into the vast majority of laptops. Like a smartphone camera is literally like 10 times better. Um, so, yeah, and it's it, it worked. It worked really well from my experience. Like it's really high quality video coming through there. And it's uh, like I said, it's free, too. Um, I think you can get an upgraded version that's a pro version that offers more features. But the free versions seem to work really, really well. Um, yeah. Did you have trouble with the RAM upgrade in the SCAR 15? Mine's 1 by 16, not 2 times 8. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't have any problem with the RAM upgrade. Interesting. You have a 1 by 16. 
Um, see, mine mine came with two times 16 with a 32 gig total um, in mine. So it's just going to vary, I guess, from unit to unit, model to model. Interesting, Dan. Um, but it's good to good to keep that in mind when you're ordering any kind of laptop to just to check what's in that specific unit. Um, Pensive Pika, can you make a video on how you disassembled and upgraded your Scar 15? I'm looking for a reference to upgrade mine. Um, Pensive Pika, I actually live streamed the whole process of me taking the bottom off um, and then switching out the SSDs. So, and then doing the RAM is also really, really easy too. So, yeah, you just want to make sure you, you basic guide for taking any laptop apart. You need to have a good set of tools, ideally something like this. I have a link in the description to these iFixit toolkit. This comes with everything you need to take a laptop apart reliably. Um, while we're in this, we can switch over to this mode so I can just show you this. Okay, so this iFixit toolkit is quite extensive. It comes with all of the plastic prying tools. You'll need a laptop apart um, without damaging it. Um, and then, so you've got everything from like these little picks right here, which you can wedge into stuff, you know, w without damaging the chassis or anything. Um, and then the, t the tool that I use a lot, uh, and you'll see me use it soon here, is this guy right here. Um, this allows you to get into the edge of a chassis and kind of gently push it apart without scratching it or bending it. Um, though you still can damage a laptop if you pry too hard, because it'll be like, hard plastic versus soft plastic. Um, and then this also has a fully, um, you know, every type of bit you'll need to upgrade, upgrade any laptop that you ever buy in the future, as far as I know. Um, any laptop I've tried to take apart, and I've took apart probably 20, 30 laptops at least. Um, but uh, yeah, so you've got uh, all kinds of Phillips head screw, screwdriver heads, um, flat heads of different sizes, uh, the T5s, which you'll need for a lot of laptops. Um, just lots of options. And then this little tool right here is also magnetic. So it allows you to easily grab the screws when they're around your system. So you don't lose the screws. There's a link to this toolkit um, in the description down below if you decide to uh, if you decide to pick one up. And that does help support my channel. Um, but uh, there are cheaper versions, I think, of this. Uh, like if you get, I don't know, I'm sure there's some other brands. I think this one's $80. So this is a little bit more expensive. But it's the kind of thing you'll buy once. And you can keep for 20, 30, 40 years as long as, you know, you keep you take care of it, right? So, um, all right, we're back into our windows. Thanks so much. You're the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no problem, man. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. My goal is to be as helpful to you guys as possible. Um, if this laptop had an AMD processor, I think more people would get it. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, this is the Zephyrus G15 with an Intel processor. Like that's like it's like it's the exact same size, basically. I mean, it's yeah, it's very, it's very, very, very similar. Um, I gotta say, I am seeing some of my fingerprints, though it is rather uh, warm in here right now. Oop, I didn't do the password right. Huh? Okay. Something wrong? I know that's correct. Okay, that's weird. Do, 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 do. Weird, okay. Well, I think I just wasn't typing it right. Um, okay, so the Asus Tough Dash F15 3070 costs 1930 USD in India. Can you please extrapolate it to the Zephyrus G15 3070 as it is yet to launch in India? I want to know how much I need to save. Uh, Abjit, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not an expert. Um, roughly, this one costs 1100, and the Zephyrus G15 that I have with 16 gigs of RAM, not 32, um, that one costs 1800. So about 75, 80 percent more. Thanks for the content, man. You got me to order the 2021 Asus ROG Strix G17. I'm so I'm pretty pumped. Sweet, sweet Parker. I mean, I, that's a great laptop, man. For the money, I, that's one of the best for sure. Okay, let's go back to Windows Update. Get that going.
download and install. We go to my Asus again. We got more updates to do before we can do our tests. Do do do. Do 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 do. We gotta download our uh, upgraded drivers. I think it's still too warm in here to do my benchmarks too. I need to get my AC going. Uh, I always test at 73 degrees Celsius, or at least as close to that as possible. It's one of the first hotter days of the year. Like this is the second day this year I've had to turn on my AC. Uh, Malik says, just joined the stream. Say thanks again for the single versus dual rank memory performance video. Got my new memory. I noticed roughly 12 FPS more in Shadow of the Tomb Raider bench. Ooh, nice, man. Congrats. Yeah, that memory upgrade's pretty big in some of those games. Like it's, you can get sometimes, I think, more FPS from the memory upgrade than you can by upgrading a whole tier of GPU, which is, I never thought that was possible. Um, how does the chassis feel, Gustavo? I did a whole press around on the chassis earlier uh, in the live stream if you want to go check it out, but it um, feels great. This is a very premium feeling machine overall. Hey, will you be reviewing the new G14 when it's out? Yes, Phantom Online. I'll be doing uh, live unboxing and testing and benchmarking of that. I've got it ordered. It should actually be here in less than a week. I've just got so many different laptops to do. <laughs> so many i feel so far behind now because uh you know i got uh i was just busy with the hp reverb review for so many days just like probably like a hundred hours in vr the last two weeks <laughs> just it's a lot of vr um just testing that sucker out um really really thoroughly and then uh i just got behind on everything <laughs> on all of the laptop reviews I wanted to make, all the videos. Oh, man. And now and now the HP Reverb, uh, I had an audio issue with the right ear cup, so I had to send it back to HP. And they're sending me a new one, and then I'll be able to finish that review. You have more laptops than stock in many countries, believe me. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I only have like six around here, seven around here. Uh, do you have any idea of when the Asus Zephyrus G15 will come back in stock in Canada? Um, I do not know. Uh, I just know that the the stock right now in all of the different countries is just it's really really limited supply all around. Um, so in in some senses, if you need a laptop soon, you've just got to buy what's available. Like if you're in school right now and you need a laptop for this semester, you got to get what's available. Uh, and that may that may include buying an Intel CPU. And that may include buying an RTX 2000 series machine instead of 3000 series, possibly, uh, depending on what you can get. Um, can you take the stickers off without voiding the warranty? Um, Andrew, yeah, I think the stickers have nothing to do with the warranty. Hey, Gizmo, I saw your spreadsheet that you linked uh, Exotic PC. What is... But is that site trustworthy? Because I see the RTX 3000 laptops are always in stock. So cognitive similarity. The thing is, what they do on um, on Exotic PC and a lot of these other sites is they'll let you order it, um, even though they don't have the laptop in stock right then. So you may end up waiting three months before they actually ship the machine to you. Um, it's just going to depend. Um, yeah. Am I getting an HP Omen 2021 laptop? Yes. Um, I think the nice thing about buying from a lot of the other places versus, like, say, a place like Exotic PC, um, like, Exotic PC, like, it's a trustworthy site, but the thing is, like, you buy from Amazon, you buy from Best Buy, you got an easy, easy refund process pretty much all the time. Um, you buy from Exotic PC, you're probably going to pay a 15% restocking fee uh, or some form of restocking fee uh, unless there's an issue with the laptop. Um, so that's a downside. And then we're installing Windows updates right now. Um, so I put that in there. Just, just know that like 
they don't usually actually have the laptop in stock, even if they let you order it from there. Um, it's kind of like uh, a lot of the websites right now, honestly. So I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that they're doing that. Just don't be misled into thinking you're getting it like next week if you order from there. But it depends on the place, right? Depends depends on which laptop, because some laptops may actually ship. Um, if you're really curious, you can give them a call and ask them, when will this actually ship if I order this today? Um, check Best Buy every Monday. I was able to snag a G15. Um, yeah, Best Buy is a good place to check. It, a lot of these laptops are coming in and out of stock at Best Buy specifically. Um, and Newegg. Newegg will go in and out of stock. Uh, B&H Photo has been going in and out of stock, but um, B&H Photo has been doing a lot of back orders too, so you, you might end up ordering something that doesn't actually come in for a little while. Um, let's go ahead and download. Let's see here. Check for our updates in my Asus. Where is that at? Do, 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 do. There it is. Check. Your device has been late, updated to the latest version. Cool. Um, I also want to make sure we have the latest uh, precision touch driver. Yes. Because um, I actually noticed a big improvement uh, with my SCAR 15 uh, touchpad performance after downloading the driver. I, did, I, I would have thought that it would have auto-installed that, um, but I was getting these little glitches when I was scrolling around. And when I upgraded the touchpad driver to the latest one um, on the Asus's website, it was like the touchpad went from being like an 8 out of 10 to being like a 10 out of 10. Like really, really, really good touchpad. Um, so I'm going to make sure the touchpad driver is just up to date right now on here. All right, and then let's go ahead and open GeForce Experience. Agree and continue. I ordered from Exotic PC. They were really good. Returns are not as good as Best Buy, but I was happy with them. Um, cool, Shelby. It's good to know. Uh, Strix Scar 17 is Full HD good, or should I go for QHD? Um, Cold Blood 20, I think Full HD is, is fine. But optimally, I do recommend QHD on a 17-inch laptop if you can get it. But it's going to be one of those things that's really in short supply. All right, so uh, we're going to log in. And we're going to blurry it up real quick. I'm having to type a little extra carefully because it's not registering some keystroke inside of uh, my password, making me have to type it twice, more than once now. Let's check for drivers. Let's download the 46192 driver. Sounds fantastic. Okay, how severe is the bottleneck on the i5 10500H on the G5? Seriously considering picking one up, but I can't decide if it's worth spending the extra 30% or so for a 5800H. Um, Mike, I think it just depends uh, a lot on what game you're playing. And I haven't done all my full benchmarks yet on the G5, so I don't know how, how bad the bottleneck is. Um, I think it's going to depend just what game you're playing so much. Because a lot of the games, it's not going to bottleneck the system at all. Um, but games like, I'm sure, Battlefield 5, any CPU pretty much, even th the very best ones still bottleneck the system. So uh, so it's just going to vary so much from game to game. But, I mean, you saw, I, I did do Valorant in my initial live unboxing. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, the game played at, like, over 200 FPS uh, with that i5, 10500H. So... Pretty impressive. Um, does this will do to play Cyberpunk? Um, Alejandro, this should play Cyberpunk just fine. Uh, you're just going to, it's going to depend on what settings are actually playable. I'm not sure yet. I have to actually test it out. Um, but the RTX 3000 series laptops are uh, definitely a, a noticeable bump up in terms of performance in RTX and DLSS titles. So. S2 Spectre, want to give a shout out 
And thank you. I was able to get the Strix G17 from ZTech PC after watching your videos. Great experience with the company and an amazing computer. Oh, good, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, I know the people over at ZTech PC have been working with Donald over there for a long time. It's just I wish they would do uh, some kind of affiliate program with me. <laughs> they don't want to do an affiliate program. That's okay. Uh, but uh, it'd be a lot easier to recommend them. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be a lot. E I still recommend them, whether they do affiliate or not. Uh, it'd be a lot easier for me to link to them more often, if that makes sense. Like I would, I would incorporate their links in more of the the spreadsheet if I could. Someone has been doing their bicep curls. LOL. What? Who's been doing their bicep curls? <laughs> uh, will the Scar seventeen thirty eighty be more powerful than a desktop thirty sixty? Uh, Ti, I think so. It would probably actually be really close, hotter than Hotmail. Um, the Scar thirty eighty is is pretty dang close to a desktop thirty seventy, but it's a little lower than that. I'm not sure how big the gap is between the thirty sixty Ti and the thirty seventy, so it's gonna slot in there right around, right around that spot. Um, okay, so we need to restart the machine again. Do you think this would be a good option to play AAA games at 60 FPS 1080? Um, yeah, this should play most AAA games at close to 60 FPS. Um, I need to test the display. That's my biggest question right now on this machine. <clears throat> I need to try playing this, uh, this laptop on a game like Valorant so I can get a rough idea of you know what kind of uh, ghosting or delay the, dis the display might have. Because that's, I think that's my number one concern with this machine in terms of whether I can like wholeheartedly recommend it or not. The other, the other concern with this machine is, um, if you want to maximize uh, performance in, let's say, uh, esports titles like CS:GO, Rainbow Six Siege, stuff like that, you're going to get more performance if you can bypass NVIDIA Optimus with an external display. Uh, that said. We only have a 144 hertz display on this unit, so I would think we're going to get 144 FPS in almost all of the esports titles, nearly all of them at least. So, so that's why my main concern really comes down to, um, yeah, not all of the esports titles, but most of them, um, all the optimized ones should we get should get 144. Um, like games, esports titles. Say if you're playing Battlefield 5, that that I don't know if that's an esports title. Not so much. I think that's more of a triple A title. Uh, but anyway, th that, that title in particular is uh, very, very demanding, unlike most of the esports the games that are super optimized. When I say an esports title, I'm thinking like Valorant, Overwatch, stuff like that. Uh, will you do a more in-depth review of the Gigabyte G5 or you'll just leave it at the Unbox Plus stream? Uh, Man UP, I want to do a full detailed review and a live benchmarking uh, stream. Um, it says YouTube Live is saying my you guys are not getting enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Interesting. Uh, let me know if you guys. Oh, okay. Let me know if the live stream is having any issues. I'm gonna switch my Scar 15 to Turbo mode and see if that improves performance. Something is going on with my Scar 15 right now. And I don't know what it is. Like the mouse is not responsive right now. I think Windows Windows update has been going off randomly in the background and messing things up for me. I'm trying to open the task manager. I mean, we're just doing this uh, Windows update right now anyway. All right, what's going on? OBS Studio is taking some CPU resources up. I uh, see as so as soon as I open Task Manager, the moment I open Task Manager, all the performance issues go away. <laughs> what? Uh, super weird. Okay, let me know if the uh, the stream is doing better now. Thoughts on the Legion Five Pro? Uh, seems like a very promising computer, Christopher Lowe. And if you want to wait for it um, and not buy anything that's currently out, uh, that's, I think, an, a viable option. Yeah, it looks like the stream is super smooth again. I don't know what was going on. Super weird. Make sure you have the RGB on for that 160% boost. <laughs> that's right. 
<laughs> yeah, it, like as soon as I opened the Windows Task Manager on the Scar, it just instantly, instantly flew it again. Like, but getting to the point where I was opening the Task Manager for some reason is just yeah, it's truly really annoying. Super weird. Anyway, um, so overall, I think the the biggest competitors for this Tough Dash F15. Uh, right around, let's say, less than $1,300, like maybe even less than $1,200. Uh, you've got the HP Omen 15Z. That one, that that computer is going to be a really strong competitor with this machine and the Gigabyte G5. Um, I think it costs, uh, let me see, while we're waiting for this to do all these updates, I can go ahead and show you. Um, do do. Right here, we gotta change this. Okay. So this is my RTX 3000 spreadsheet uh, right here. So here's my, it's like my list of my full recommendations. Um, you can see any new updates to stock. I add them in here. Um, there's not been very many changes the last several days, uh, but I'll add them whenever they do happen. Um, so if there's any, like whenever HP oh, releases the Element 15Z again, I'll add that in there. Um, and then, so you can see I have the ASUS Tough Dash F15, this unit right here on my top recommended, as well as the Gigabyte G5. And then right below it, you can see we have the Omen 15Z with the RTX uh, 3060 and a Ryzen 7 5800H. Uh, and if I open this up, I think the link still works to view what's going on. Oh, nope, it's just not even processing at all anymore. But basically, I can show you right here, for $20 more, you can get a Ryzen 5 5600H. Um, processor, which is a crazy good processor uh, with the new Ryzen stuff. So that one's going to be a really good one, but it also only comes with 8 gigs of RAM. So, yeah. I don't know. And I, So you're going to, it's going to end up costing you more than it, it looks like, right? It's going to end up costing you closer to 1170 to get the upgraded RAM at the very least. Um, and then if you want the upgraded RGB keyboard and stuff like that. It's going to cost a little extra as well. So they have a lot of little upgrade options here that are going to increase the cost. Um, and uh, the Omen 15Z, we don't know what the TDP of the GP will be either. I'm guessing around 80 to 90 watts, but we don't know um, yet. As far as I know, we don't know yet. No one has that laptop in, in hand yet. But I think these are the top three laptops right around this price point. Um, we do have the Legion 5 as well. That's going to be somewhere in this ballpark. Uh, ballpark. Um, that one could be a really good option as well. So uh, looks like the laptop is back. Let's go ahead and switch back to the laptop view. All right. But uh, there's a link in the video description down below if you want to um, check out that spreadsheet while well, we're getting all of these drivers installed and updated. Uh, it's going to probably be another five, five, ten minutes probably to get everything installed enough. You never know with Windows updates, though. Windows updates are crazy sometimes. But yeah, I think for right around the $1,100 price point, those are my top three recommendations. $1 laptop versus $1 desktop. What? Do you think it's really worth the effort to get the 1499 G14? Um, I really like the Zephyrus G14 from last year. The thing is, okay, the thing is, the Zephyrus G14 um, is thinner, it's smaller, it's lighter. It's going to be an incredibly portable machine. That's going to offer eight core multi-threaded performance. I love that. Okay. Um, the downside is the lower TDP version um, of the RTX 3060. So you're, you're sacrificing some GPU performance for that portability going with the Zephyrus G14 versus even something like this. Like this is a higher TDP than the G14. Um, so the Tough Dash A15 not only costs less, but you're also going to get more GPU performance in this. But it's a 15-inch chassis. So it's not going to be as portable. So if you're something that's just, if you're someone that is like, I gotta have the most portable system, 
three and a half pounds, can fit in any backpack. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're a smaller person. Maybe you only weigh 100 pounds. That's when I think the Zephyrus G14 can make a lot more sense. Um, worth sacrificing that. Or you're just someone who just craves having something super portable. Um, then I think the, the Zephyrus G14 is one of the most portable and still powerful systems out there. Does that make sense? So I think it's worth the $14.99 price point versus the last generation 2060 version, I would, I would say. Um, but I haven't done all the tests on that, so it's hard, it's hard to know for sure. Okay, so did we get... It's not, it's not installing this. That's so annoying. <laughs> We've restarted three times now. It has not installed that, even though I've expressly told it to install. Uh, let's do our setup. So we've got to get uh, we got to get HW info installed. Well, it's actually already installed. It's basically a utility that you just run. We need to get Afterburner installed, and then we also need to uh, configure Afterburner to give us our overlay, so we can see what our TDPs are while we're restarting. Um, and if like this is just preliminary tests. These aren't my official benchmark numbers that I'm going to use for my review. Um, and keep so keep in mind these numbers can change a little bit as we get, you know, let's say as we get the uh, Windows update, for example. Usually the Windows updates don't affect performance very much, but sometimes they do. So um, just depends. Okay. Let's see here. Did you verify? Did you get verified yet? No, I have not on this one. My main channel is verified already. Video idea. Uh, I can't really do a $1 laptop versus $1 desktop because that doesn't really exist. Like maybe like a $300 or something. Or maybe a $1,000 laptop versus a $1,000 desktop. That might be an interesting video. Okay. Interesting. Looks like we're not reading anything. Ah, initializing armory print. Would a 2070 Max Q get 200 plus FPS in Valorant? Um, yeah, it could. Uh, a 2070 Max Q could probably get 200 FPS. Um, Depends on what CPU it's paired with, honestly. Valorant is a very CPU dependent game. So, okay, so Armory Crate is a bit different. We've got a different UI design for the Tough Dash. Here, let me turn this light off behind me. That should let you see the display a bit clearer. Um, okay, so iGPU mode is off. We can turn it on. That switches between the dedicated GPU and the integrated GPU. Um, auto, which will auto switch between them. Um, and, that, and keep in mind, the integrated GPU will stay on, I believe, no matter what, I, I think. Let's see. Let's go to Device Manager and see if it disappears. I don't think it will, though. So right now we have Intel Iris Xe graphics only why don't we have the nvidia gpu listed here that's weird i wonder if we uh need to reinstall nvidia driver let's just go and get the nvidia driver downloaded uh, i did not want that what is that Get out of here. Do, 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 do. Start search. What gaming desktop would you recommend for games like Roblox or Valorant? Um, you could probably get just about any budget. Any budget desktop would probably, any budget gaming desktop. So like say an RTX 2060 desktop or better. Um, we'll be able to handle those lightweight titles, no problem. Okay, here we are. Let's get this downloaded. Do, 
download now. Cool. Installer cannot continue. <laughs> GeForce Experience requires an NVIDIA GPU. Please restart this. Please refer to the system requirements. <laughs> oh my God. So for some reason, our NVIDIA GPU is not being detected anymore. <laughs> what is going on? Is Windows Update doing stuff? That's weird. I heard that the plastic this laptop's made from might affect performance due to heading. I think you mean heating. Um, I don't know about the plastic. I don't think the plastic would have anything, anything to do with the thermal performance. Um, but maybe the under chassis if it doesn't allow enough airflow. Uh, but that I know that I know that the ASUS Tough A15 from last year did not have enough airflow. This one I'm not sure. Um, so in Armory crates, it should not be like uh, yeah, it was on integrated GPU only mode. So integrated GPU mode is off now. Okay. Integrated GPU mode is off, which means we should have the NVIDIA GPU pop up here, but we do not. MSI is not detecting it. I think we need to do a restart, maybe an update and a restart or something. I don't know. I think I think what happened was our driver, uh, our driver install for NVIDIA messed up. Hey man, I just got my MSI GE66. Do you know where to configure the RGB light bar? Um, thanks, man. Um, I try this. Is there a Steel Series um, lighting application, Alejandro? I can't remember. It's been six or seven months since I had the GE66. Um, what laptop GPU and TDP is ideal for 1440p on high settings? Uh, I would say any of the new RTX 3000 series, Shadow WE with a high TDP. So a 3060, 3070, and 3080 would be enough. Um, also, RTX 2070 Super and better for the 2000 series would be able to do most games at that resolution. Um, if you go to ultra settings, that's when you're going to want even better, though, right? Okay, so the computer restarted again. Do we have our NVIDIA GPU? We do not. NVIDIA controllers platform and framework. This is here. Can I update the driver? What is this? We're going to just try disabling NVIDIA. Let's enable NVIDIA. Oh my God. All right, uh, let's go to add and remove programs. <laughs> I guess we'll try um, uninstalling NVIDIA stuff, video drivers. How is the Alienware M17 R4 3080 with 360 hertz refresh rate? Um, Chronicle Lethal Gaming, that should be really good for esports gaming. I would not uh, recommend that to people that want good battery life, though. So I believe that it does not have, um, that version of the display does not have NVIDIA Optimus. So you're going to end up with less battery life. It says power savings on the GPU and armory crate. Uh, no, I turned that off. See, I integrated GPU mode is off. So it should, that means that the, because this says off, that should mean that the, the NVIDIA GPU is active. But we're not getting that right now. So we're just going to try removing, we're going to try just removing all the NVIDIA drivers and just go from fresh. Would you wait for the SCAR 15 or get the Razer Blade Advanced 3080 QHD now? Um, so those are definitely two different styles of chassis, Shelby. You know, the Razer Blade uh, 15 Advanced, right? Uh, that one's a super premium, super thin, lower TDP chassis. Uh, and I, I can definitely recommend it for people that want that in a laptop. Uh, but know that, uh, you know, the SCAR 15 is a thicker premium chassis 
Uh, it's not as portable, and it doesn't have an all-metal aluminum build. Uh, but the Scar 15 offers more performance. So if you if that's really what you want, if you want the maximum performance, then I would recommend the Scar 15. If you want the maximum premiumness at the expense of performance, that's when I would go with the Razer series. Um, also, if you can spend more money, because the Razer series is also more expensive. Hey, did we get our drive? Uh, is the NVIDIA GPU showing up again now? We've got our NVIDIA GPU back. Look at that. Uninstalling the drivers worked. Awesome sauce. Um, like, I really liked my Razer Blade Pro 17. So, uh, I really liked my Razer Blade Pro 17 a lot because of just how insanely premium it feels. Like, there is there is something to a super premium laptop. Like, And I think that's why the this Asus Tough Dash will attract a lot of people versus something like the Gigabyte G5. Like, if you're a premium-oriented person... The Tough Dash is probably the better way to go, even if it offers less performance. We'll see. Um, that said, it depends on so much on what games you play. Like if you're an esports gamer, I'm pretty sure the G5 is going to be better because that just that because of that uh, 240 hertz display. There's just there's a lot of things to keep in mind <laughs> with all of this, but I think I think a lot of people will really like this machine because um, it'll provide enough gaming performance at a reasonable price with a premium build with good battery life, with good functionality, good keyboard, good touchpad, a, a good enough display. Probably I need to test the display. Still trying to get all the driver's updates done and then we can load up Valorant. Yeah, Windows Update still has not finished installing. This or the MSI GS66, it has a 2060 and an i7 CPU. It costs 10.99 USD on Best Buy. It has a $400 discount. Ooh. Hmm. So uh, Alejandro Cardenas. Uh, so the nice thing about the GS66 is that it comes with a MUX switch, or at least it does this year. I'm not sure. I think last year it had it too. Um, so you're going to get a little bit better performance, you know. Which which i7 CPU though? Because there's a six core i7 and there's an eight core i7. So if it's a six core, it's less attractive. If it's an eight core for 1099, it's more attractive. Um, so what do I think about the Legion Five Seven Ryzen Seven 5800H? I think it could be really good. Um, because I think it'll be a I think the Legion Five will be a really attractive machine. So I'll hit restart later. We'll restart this now. Let's see if we can get Windows Update to actually complete. Um, Alejandro, I just responded <laughs> to you. Did you not listen? You're asking the same question again. Uh, okay. Toss up between the Asus and the Razer for me. My money, but money aside, do you have a preference in that 2K range? Uh, I think. Mystical baby, I think it just depends on what you really want. Premium versus performance, you know. Thinness versus extra performance. All metal build versus thicker but still really nice build. Sorry, updated the window. Okay, good, good. I hope that helped answer your questions. Question. Um, go back like five minutes if you missed it. Do you expect the new HP Home 15Z to outperform this laptop? Uh, it depends on what we're talking about in terms of what you're talking about specifically. Um, you know, depending on what game, uh, what application, what's the specifications of the Open 15Z. Uh, the Open 15Z costs more, like around I think uh, eighty dollars more to get the same specs, but with a Ryzen 5000 series instead of this uh, Intel 11th gen. Um, overall. It's it's going to be really close between the 50, Omen 15Z and and the Asus Tough Dash. Okay, so let's find out if we got our driver updated, and do we have our display adapter? Yes, we've got our display adapter. This is good. 
we have our NVIDIA GPU. So we do not want our in-game overlay. Good, that's already disabled. Let's go to our, so we're, right now I need to quickly optimize for the most performance. So we're going to go to game mode, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna turn off game bar, turn off captures, turn off game mode, okay. Okay, and then now we need to install Afterburner or configure Afterburner properly. Windows Update is just not going through. Uh, let's see here. GPU 1 is the one we want. So right here, what I'm doing is I am uh, configuring the overlay so that we'll be able to see, uh, we'll be able to see what is going on uh, while we're in the game. So there'll be an overlay that pops up and shows us our power limits and our TDP and if our GPU is throttling and why it's throttling, if it's throttling. Uh, we get our CPU temperature, our CPU usage, our CPU TDP, our CPU clock speed. I suppose we can show our RAM usage. And then we'll also do our frame rate, our frame rate average, and our 1% lows. Okay. So now we're going to go here. We're going to set it so we can start recording our benchmarks as needed for later. Um, we've got Reva Statistics Tuner. We're going to start that with Windows. There should be a start with Windows button. There we go. And then all you need to configure this so that our, um, our overlay is in the middle of the display so it's easy to see and change the font size so it's easy to see. All right. Now we can just make sure nothing's running. Cool. And let's go ahead and run Cinematrock 20. So inside of Armory Crate, we're also going to want to set this to turbo mode. There's no manual fan mode on this laptop. <clears throat> so turbo fan mode is our highest performance profile. Um, cool. Very cool. All right, we're going to accept this, and then we're going to open our HW info. This will show us our TDPs for the CPU while it's running this benchmark. What laptop you ordered do you think will be delivered next? Uh, probably the Zephyrus G14, Raul. Gato Paint. For laptops, should I go Intel or AMD Ryzen? Um, my recommendation for most people is uh, going to be the Ryzen 5000 series, but it just depends. Um, depends on like what you're going to do. Right? If you're just mainly going to be gaming, doing some productivity tasks, it doesn't matter that much between the two. Because um, gaming performance is very similar. But Ryzen, Ryzen performance is just... Uh, it's better thermally speaking. Um because it's a seven nanometer chip versus 14 nanometer. Um, and this is a 10 nanometer chip. This is the 11th gen Intel, but it's only four cores. So we're gonna see how this does in Cinebench R20. You can see right now we're we're averaging 4.3 gigahertz. 4.3 gig. We're still in our initial boost phase of the CPU. So we'll see if it drops down. What's our TDPs like? So our temperatures are spiking into the 90s. Averaging 90 right now for our overall like worst case CD, uh, CPU temp. Our TDP core package power is 54.5 watts, which is pretty good. That's actually a lot of power going into this four core CPU. <laughs> so we're, we're averaging 4.27 gigahertz across all of these cores all at once. We should be nearing the end of the initial boost phase. 
I'm curious if this is going to drop down lower or not. I feel like we had a slowdown there for a second. Something else may be going on when it may have happened in the background. Because it like didn't move for like 10 seconds. Yeah, this is only a four core Intel. A comb of both, I'd say. Um, so if you're going to do both Gato Paint, my recommendation would be uh, probably a Ryzen 5000. Um, and if you're a mi mixture of doing creator work as well, probably the ideal kind of laptop would be something like the Zephyrus G15. But it depends on your price point. Like this is an entry level machine um, at $1,100. So, you know, if you're in that, if you're more like under $1,200 price point, that's where. I don't know. The Omen 15Z is attractive. This one's attractive as well as the um, the Gigabyte G5 over there. I don't know. It just depends on what your price point is. Any idea when you'll get the Zephyrus Duo 15 SE for review? So, Tuber, I saw your question earlier. Sorry. Uh, I was just busy talking about something else. Um, they have not said if they're going to send the Zephyrus Duo 15 to me yet. They have not verified that. Um, Asus was talking about sending me stuff, and then they haven't sent me anything yet. I need to I need to hound their uh, marketing people to send me something. <laughs> but the thing is, I've already got so many laptops. I'm so far behind. I got too much tech to review right now, anyway. So, but uh, upcoming reviews I know that are coming. We've got the Omen 15Z coming. We've got the Alienware M17 coming eventually, probably three to four weeks from now or something like that. I don't know. Um, just Alienware said that they would send me something at some point. Um, Asus has said they would send me something at some point, but I, I've got the Zephyrus G14 coming in next-ish. Um, and then I've got a, a bunch of other reviews I want to make right now. Like I want to compare the Zephyrus G14 versus the Strix G17 and the Scar 15. I want to um, compare all three levels of the RTX 3060 versus 3070 versus 3080. Um, I want to make videos talking about what's the best laptops to buy in every price point from like under a thousand to under fifteen hundred to like under eighteen hundred, under twenty five hundred or something. I don't know, different price points. I've got so much content I want to make. I've just been really busy with the HP Reverb G2 review. So yeah. Um so Gato Paint, if you're in the market for a new laptop, my recommendation is to take a perusal of my spreadsheet. Um, I'll go, I'll show you it real quick. One second. So 2667 is what, are, what we're getting pretty consistently. That's not amazing, but it's good for a four core, I guess you could say. All right. So let me show you this. Here we go. Um, so this is my RTX 3000 spreadsheet. There's a link in the video description, um, of the live stream. So this is going to give you lots of different things to consider. Um, this is my top laptops that I recommend. And um, so you can see there's a wide range of price. Uh, you can check those out. Some of these are going to be in stock. Some of the, most of them are sold out, though. Um, and then as well, in throughout this whole list, I have all of the recommendations uh, bolded. Now, I've rated each of the laptops with the CPU performance, GPU performance, premium features, as well as the price performance. These are all rough ratings. Don't take them too seriously. And I recommend checking out specific reviews on any laptop you're interested in. So just you can just use this as a rough guide only for comparing um, to give you a rough idea of what it's going to perform like. Now, you can sign up for notifications for when I make changes, if you wish, up here in the top. <clears throat> by going to tools and then notification rules, and then you can say, send me a change or send me a notification. Um, and it'll email you every time I make a change to the sheet because I do update the stock. Like the Zephyrus G14 came into stock today and the SCAR 17 came into stock today as well. So both of these laptops are in my recommendation list um, and they may already be out of stock by now. I don't know. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, constantly these laptops that are really high demand are going in stock and then out of stock. So this one's still in stock, the Zephyrus G14. So that's good. Anyway, so go check out that list if you want to have a bunch of ideas for what potential laptops you can buy um, after the stream or or whatever. So so yeah. Okay. So 2667, I feel like that's good for a four core, but that's just not amazing single core perform or that's not amazing multi-core performance, especially when you look at the fact that, you know, like the new Ryzen 
5800 uh, H can do closer to 5000 or like 4800 in a lot of a lot of circumstances. Okay, so I want to do the single core now. Let's see what this gets for single core. Britt Allen with the five dollar super chat. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate your support. Uh, might as well buy a desktop than a ten pound laptop. <laughs> See, tuber. I think that's true for a lot of people, but a a lot of other people are like, you know what? What I need is like a super mobile desktop experience. You know, so you could, for example, go to um, keep it on your desk most of the time, but then occasionally take it to your friend's house and do a quick LAN, you know, or a, a quick gaming party. And so you can still move it without having to take your monitor, your keyboard, your mouse, and a giant desktop that could break in the car, you know? So, so yeah. How much more battery would you get with the Ryzen 5000 versus Ryzen 4000? Um, not a huge difference in battery life, I don't think, Phantom Online, um, because they're both on 7 nanometer architecture. But it's probably just a slight, slight difference. Um, but it, for example, a, an increased battery overall size is going to make a bigger difference for like how much watt hours the battery is in each laptop than if it was Ryzen 5000 versus 4000, I would think. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for the Lenovo 5 2021, but there's no official release to be like prepared. Uh, yeah, got to, I'm I'm anticipating it's going to be released in the United States around April-ish, mid-April-ish, early April-ish, end of April. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's there's the people in the Asian markets, um, and I think in some of the European markets as well. Um, they have already got the Lenovo Five and Five Pro already launched and everything, so. Makes everyone in the United States uh, like a sad panda. <laughs> you know, they're, we're all looking over there and being like, why can't we have good things too? Um, kind of, at least. So in our single core test, um, this thing is ramping up to 4.8 gigahertz on single core. 4.76. It's jumping from one core to the next core each time it does one of the new thread things. That's impressive. Um, and it bodes really well for single core threaded performance in games. So, so I, you know, you can get the older uh, Lenovo Legion. I think that's a viable option right now. But I will say that the Lenovo Legion lineup, it, it, like for the Lenovo Legion Five, let's say with the RTX twenty sixty, it's a nice higher wattage GPU in that. Um, but it's an RTX 2000, and it's also probably going to come with either a, you know 10th gen Intel or a AMD Ryzen 4800H, which the, the new architecture for the Ryzen 5000 series is just a lot better. So that's kind of where my recommendation would still be to not get probably a Legion 2000 series, probably um, unless you get a really good deal on it. Um, I did make a video talking about RTX 2000 versus RTX 3000 series laptops. Um, it's on my channel if you want to go check it out. But I think it's a very relevant topic um, for a lot of people right now when they're trying to decide between a 2000 and 3000 series. This or the Aorus 15G? Well, the Aorus 15G is going to cost quite a bit more, right? Um, so it's going to be like $400 more. Um, and I would definitely recommend the Aorus 15G with the 3060 if you can get that instead, because that does have a MUX switch, which is going to give you more performance. Um, and that's one of the cheapest laptops you can buy with a MUX switch as well. So, uh, But I really like the Aorus 15G overall. It's a great chassis. Um, Fly testing the games. Yeah, we're going to load up Valorant here soon um, and give Valorant a shot. Is it worth waiting for a 2021 Legion for that 140 watt RTX? Um, it maybe. I haven't seen any detailed performance reviews on that yet. Um, I would say if you can't get a really good R uh, RTX 3000 series with the Ryzen 5000 uh, now, because it's all sold out, 
you could try waiting for a Legion. Um, but you're going to want to stay on top of that because the Legion series, I can guarantee you, is also going to be just as sold out as all of the other <laughs> laptops with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs in it. I have a Lenovo and it has so many problems. I am able to run 60 FPS in high graphics for a few days and suddenly performance drops and I get 25 to 40 FPS in the lowest settings. It's so annoying. Um, interesting, Sourish. That's weird. Um, I would encourage you to check. Uh, I would encourage you to pull up something like HW Info. Um, maybe your MSI Afterburner. You can do the overlay like I just set up a few minutes ago. Um, and you can see uh, what's going on with your system. Because if you're running into lots of throttling and bottlenecking in gameplay, it's probably because um, your CPU is being really power limited or your GPU is being power limited. Um, maybe something is thermally throttling a lot. So maybe uh, one of your, either your GPU or your CPU is really overheating. Um, maybe you need a driver update. Uh, so I would encourage you to update your drivers. I would encourage you to clean out your fans. Um, and if none of those work, I would encourage you to uh, probably restart your machine as well. That's one of the easiest things that can fix uh, low low performance glitching. Um, uh, so, but but yeah, I would say the biggest thing is uh, you'll want to do all of those things. So check drivers, update drivers, update Windows, um, restart the machine. Um, make sure you're in the right power profiles. So you're running on high performance mode with uh, high fan mode. Uh, run MSI Afterburner to see if things, anything's throttling, overheating. And then you should be able to discover the problem by then. Like something is going to be throttling or overheating or something's slowing you down. So you just got to figure out what it is and try to fix the problem. So that's basically like buy whatever's in stock. Gato. Yeah, it's kind of kind of is. But I would say buy whatever's in stock of the right tech because there's a bunch of different laptops that are really good. Like all of the stuff that I linked in that recommended section on the spreadsheet are really good um, or should be really good. I haven't been able to review all of them. But um, so it's just going to vary so much from like laptop to laptop, though, because like some of the new laptops this year are just not as good of deals and other laptops are really good deals. Um, and I think it's a matter of selecting the right one and it's a matter of, uh, getting, I, so in, in the ideal world, you'll want to get, um, for maximum gaming performance, um, you either want to get the, the GPU that's the best you can get for your budget and you want to get 16 gigs of Ram, 144 Hertz display with a good response rate, um, and potentially, a color gamut that you really need, right? If you need to do a lot of creative work, I would recommend at least 100% sRGB. That's where the Gigabyte G5 is really attractive because it has a better display, better color, um, and a six core processor versus this four core processor. Um, and then uh, in addition, like if you do tons of esports games, I would highly recommend a MUX switch in your laptop. But pretty much only the more expensive laptops have the MUX switch. Nothing around this price point has a MUX switch, I think, except maybe the Omen 15T. And then the next cheapest would be the Aorus 15G. So depends on what games you play. If you mainly play AAA titles, then you don't really need a MUX switch as badly. Um, if you play lots of CPU-bound games, that's where a MUX switch is really, really important. Um, but I would, in general, if you're a gamer, I would avoid a 60 hertz display. I would avoid... Um, buying a RTX 2000 series unless it's on sale, like a really good sale. Um, and then I would avoid um, hmm. yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I would, uh, out of the top things I would avoid. That would probably be the big big ones. So 544 for the single bench, uh, single core set of bench R20 score. Um Cool. So now let's go ahead and give Time Spy a run. I was expecting to get a laptop for around $1,500. That's my budget. But now the stock is and no options. Everything overpriced. So at $1,500, my recommendation would probably be the Aorus 15G. Um, if you need to get something now, if you can wait 
you might be able to get something with a Ryzen. So maybe going something like the HP Omen 15Z uh, with the Ryzen series and the RTX 3060. Um, you could also go, if you want something thinner and lighter, you can go with the Zephyrus G14, which is right now in stock. Um, linked in my spreadsheet. So that's a very thin and light and very portable, nice and premium chassis. But it doesn't have a muck switch. The Oris 15G is going to give you more performance. Um, but the Oris 15G is a bit bigger. <clears throat> Wait, I bought the Tough Dash F15, but it was $2,300. That's a very expensive price for a Tough Dash F15. I'm guessing you bought it with upgraded RAM and SSDs or something. Do you recommend the GE76 3080 300Hz Full HD or SCAR17 3080 QHD? Um, between those two, the GE76 will have better raw GPU performance, um, but the SCAR17, uh, the display will be better, and you'll have a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, so you'll have better thermals. Um, and the SCAR17 thermals, I think, are just better than the GE76 uh, when you look at the GPU and CPU thermals together, because the GE76 only has two heat pipes to the CPU, so it really is kind of a bad thermal um, bad thermal bottleneck for the CPU only, I guess. But uh, I definitely do recommend the GE76 because it has a MUX switch and a really high TDP GPU. It's one of the most powerful laptops you can buy for just pure gaming performance. It'll be more powerful in most games. So taking a look here, we've got our GPU boosting to 85 watts. That's good. Um, that puts us that puts us at the, I don't know, I'm guessing we're like a 70 to 85 or maybe a 65. 60 to 85, I don't know. We'll see what the TDP range on this GPU is, but um, I wish this could go higher, though. Like, for example, in the Gigabyte G5, we can go all the way up to 105 watts, uh, which should should mean the Gigabyte G5 is going to give us more GPU performance. I'm anticipating we'll get a lower score. I think we got around 8,200 or 8,300 on the Gigabyte G5 So for the GPU score. So we'll see what we get on this chassis do you have a suggestion for a laptop that covers the 800 to thousand dollar um that does good performance so kujo 1999 um the best priced laptops for 800 to a thousand um right at a thousand you've got the msi gf 65 thin that'll give you an rtx 3060 um so that would be my go-to in that price range but if you want to go if you're really asking for like an 800 hundred dollar laptop then there's no current RTX 3000 series that can go that low. Um, so what you're going to have to do is look for an RTX 2000 series um, or maybe a GTX 1660 Ti for under $800. So I saw, I know that I saw for like Black Friday and Christmas sales, I saw Acer Nitro 5 with an RTX 2060 and a uh, 144 hertz display, 16 gigs of RAM for 800 bucks. So that would be my go-to recommendation for someone um, right at that $800 price point um, would be to basically wait for a sale along those lines where you get an RTX 2060, 144 hertz display, um, ideally 16 gigs of RAM, 800 bucks. Like that's, but that's, that's a rare deal right now. Um, and because that kind of deal right now would cost close to $1,000. And then if you're spending $1,000, I would say, why not get an RTX 3000 series machine instead? So um, generally for most people, unless you can find that good of deal, I would say just save up $200 to $300 more and get an RTX 3000 series instead. You'll be happier. Are you planning to make a review of the GF65? That's their 80-watt 3060 budget model. Um, I'd like to. I had one on pre-order, but for some reason the pre-order got canceled. I don't know why. Um, and I have not ordered another one because I'm just too busy. Got too many, too many things. So you can see in in the earlier benchmarks we were running like 60 something degrees on the GPU. Um, we had a spike up to 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU, but it came back down as soon as the fans kicked in. Um, let's see what we get. Again, keep in mind this is just preliminary. This will change somewhat. Okay, so because of the reduced TDP, we're getting a thousand points less in time spy. 
So 7,252. That is still really good. Okay. You got to keep in mind, like, yes, that is less than the Gigabyte G5, but that is still really good and should still be able to play games great. Um, but you are getting less GPU uh, for the same price when you compare the GPU to the G5. Um, and that's simply, I think, because of the 85 watt TDP versus the 105 watt TDP of the G5. Okay. Um, and for CPU performance, we got 5185. I'm not sure what the gigabyte got, but I'm, I think, think it was more than that. Um, okay. Let's install Valorant and load it up. We'll, and then we'll take the chassis off. We'll, we'll play one match of Valorant and then we'll take the chassis off this, uh, the bottom and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so at the $1,100 price point, would you pick this or the G5? Um, okay, so assuming I was in this market, I would go... Mm, so hard to decide. Because <laughs> the G5, you're getting more performance. With the tough dash F15, you're getting a more premium experience. So I'll, I would say it just comes down to that question. Um for, for me, if it was my money, I'd go G5, I think. If, uh, but it's, it's just going to vary so much from person to person. It's a very personal question. And I think it's going to require a personal answer on what you value. So we go ahead and. Go ahead and uh, get logged in here. Try playing Cyberpunk. I don't do Cyberpunk during these initial tests. I will be doing Cyberpunk in my Cyberpunk in my live benchmarking session, which I will be doing later on at some point. Um, the thing is, uh, Cyberpunk takes a long time to install. It takes like 45 minutes to install. So um, if I was doing Cyberpunk, it would uh, actually... Cyberpunk wouldn't take as long if I did the copy paste of my files from my hard drive, but still, um, it would still take at least 20, 30 minutes, even copying files. <laughs> Test Cyberpunk, please, bro. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> do you guys really want me to do Cyberpunk instead of Valorant? Because it's one or the other. But you guys, all right, the f Valorant or Cyberpunk, let me know in the comments. I can, I can try... I can try Cyberpunk if you guys really want me to. I just got to get a copy in if we're going to do that. I should take this off. That would help my vision so much because it's blocking my view of the screen. screen. Ah, I can see, the, see screen. the screen. I checked check, the Gigabyte G5, G5 scored 7199 times 4. Yeah, yeah, so, so I, think I think the G5 is definitely, definitely the way, way to go, go if you just, just care about, about performance. performance. Valo Punk. Valorant, Valorant Cyber. Cyber. Apex, Apex Legends. Legends. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. You guys you are hilarious. Okay, okay well, well I can... I can... <laughs> you guys are going to make this take forever, forever, aren't you? I need to end, end this live stream, stream soon, guys. guys. Okay. okay. Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk and Valorant. And Valorant. I, I'll, 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 I'll do, do it. it. I should have just copied this earlier, and then it would have already been in here by now. How long, How long is this, this going to copy? copy? 16, 16 minutes, minutes, and then, and then we'll, we'll also have, have to do an install, install period, period too. too. I, really I really need to get, get a faster, faster external, external drive, drive, and then, and then this, won't this won't be as, be as big, big of a deal. deal. Echo? Echo? Double, Double mic? mic? Oh, okay. It's coming from here. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Better now? Uh, sorry about that. Wait, did it stop copying? I think this stopped copying for some reason. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and restart the system. Watch, and now Windows Update will be ready to go, and it's going to take 20 minutes. 
Man, you guys are going to make me... <laughs> this or the Xbox Series X. <laughs> Uh, I would uh, I would always go a laptop over a console at this point. It's way more versatile. You can do way more things with it, but that's up to you. Do you think it's worth buying the Gigabyte 15G or wait for the 15P to launch in the U.S.? Um, I'm not sure which. What? Yeah, not sure what you're talking about there. Um, because the, there's I don't know what the Gigabyte 15G is. Um, okay. I think maybe you're talking about the G5. I don't know. Uh, Derek Morrison. Thanks so much for the $5. Just found your channel. Thank you for such great content. Would you go with the Acer Predator 6 core Intel RTX 2060 Max P or the laptop you are on? Hmm. That's a tough call. Uh, I don't know if you're, are you paying more for that Acer Predator? Because if you're paying more for the Acer Predator, I would I would go with this one. Um, if it's the exact same price, uh, I'd probably go this one. Probably, but like I said, if it was my money, I'd probably go for the Gigabyte G5. Um, just because I'm just like all about that raw performance. And if this was going to be my one, if this was going to be my one machine that I had to use for everything, then that's what I would rather go for the raw performance. But it's just going to vary from person to person. Yeah, as I say, over and over again, I can't make that I can't make that judgment call for you necessarily. But uh, just know that in general, I do recommend the RTX 3000 series if it's going to be the same price. But a high wattage TDP of 2060 can outperform a low wattage 3060 as well. Sometimes. Okay. Shelby Peterson, thanks so much for the five dollars. Um, your Scar 15 review sold me on that laptop. I've learned so much from your videos. Your spreadsheet is extremely helpful. Thanks, man. Or thanks, Shelby. I don't know if you're a man. Sorry. <laughs> Probably not a man. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, but I thank you so much for your support. Um, and I'm glad the I'm glad you found the video helpful. That's my goal with these videos. It's just, or, you know, that's my goal with my content is just to try to be as helpful as I possibly can be. So let's take a look at what settings we've got in Valorant here. Let's turn these off. NVIDIA Reflex is on. We're going to turn everything to high slash ultra. And we're going to turn on 4X and 8X, which is what I set for this game. Cool. Very nice. Let's do a match. Okay. I meant Aorus 15G and 15P. Got gotcha. you. Um, I have not been able to take a look at the Aorus 15P. I don't think it's going to come to the USA market, by the way, USAF. So if you're going to get that, you're going to have to get that for an external country or something and imported. Um, up to you if it's worth it. Can you switch the RGB light of the keyboard? I don't think so. Uh, well, yeah, it looks like they have different modes. So you can have it strobe, you can have it go to static, you can do breathing, um, but not any color changes. It looks like it's set to this green color. Um, we're gonna lock in Phoenix. So uh, keep in mind that we have 144 Hertz display. So as long as we're hitting at least 144 hertz um, in this match, then then we're good. I wish there was a better way to test Valorant, but um, as far as I know, there pretty much isn't. Also, your spreadsheet is insane. You're a blessing to the community. Thanks, Omis. Hi, Gizmo. I was wondering if you're going to cover the Asus Tough A15 3060 more than just the specs. Um, OMZ95. I'd like to. I just have so many laptops to cover, and I only uh, have so many laptops I can buy as well. So we're hitting 150 right now. So we're maxing out the frame rate of the display. Let's see if we keep maxing out the display or not. Okay, so 
quickly moving the screen around, I can see that we're getting just a little bit of ghosting. I don't know if you guys can see that. So keep that in mind. It's it's a pretty fast response rate display, but it's not. This is not like a three millisecond response rate display. I can tell just from using it. Also, we are getting just a little bit of screen tearing. That screen tearing can go away. Um, screen tearing can go away if you uh, enable VSync because it doesn't look like we have any kind of G-Sync or FreeSync on this machine. So I can, and I can tell you we're getting less FPS than we were on the Gigabyte G5, probably because of the CPU not being as high. But the thing is, we may be getting less FPS than the G5, but we're still maxing out the frame rate of this display because it's a lot easier to max out 144 hertz um, resolution display. Okay, do you have it on max settings? Yes, we have this on maximum settings. Um, aside from, I think, 16x and uh, texture filtering or something like that, everything else is max. Ooh, ooh, yes, get the plant. I am proud of you. Good job. Okay, let's hear these speakers. Loudspeakers. Let me take the headset off for a moment, just listen to it. Are they going to get it? So the speakers sound really good, actually. Um, very nice. Speakers overall for the, I think for the chassis, like they're not amazing. They're I think they're two times two watt speakers, so it's not like they're going to be crushing it or anything like that. But it's it's not bad. Let's go with a shotgun this round. What is this? Oh, is that a spray? Okay, I was like, what the heck is that? Um, I just left it at 8x because that's just what I've tested it on in the past. Let's get it. Oh, I took a chunk out of that guy. Oh, no. I just got destroyed. Petro. Oh, okay, let's turn this down a little bit. It's, this is a loud, these are loudspeakers, so I can't really hear myself. Hi, I really need your help. Should I buy this one or the HP one with Ryzen 7 4800H RTX 2060? Um, Pedro, my recommendation is actually uh, go to my sheet and there. I will update my sheet link. Um, probably my number one recommendation is probably the Gigabyte G5 or the um, HP one with 15Z. Those are my, probably my top two recommendations. Uh, but this one is a little cheaper than the 15Z. So this one's still, I think, a good choice. But it's, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think more people will benefit from, like right now I'm leaning towards recommending the 15Z over this one, probably. But we'll see. I need to do, I need to do more testing, right? Just my initial impressions. Prisma waiting for the Legion 5 Pro 3060 130 watt. Um, yeah, I do I do really want to do review that too, but it's not out in the US markets. Um, Busi, Randy, Randall. What's the battery life of this? I haven't tested it yet. Um, but it should be really good battery life. All right, we're going to we're gonna try out some snipe action. So you can see that we're getting really great temperatures, 69, 75, but this isn't a particularly demanding title either. So I would expect really good temps on this game. So, I mean, I can tell you that gaming on this is pleasant, it's fun, um, but I probably would not recommend this for an ultra competitive person. If you're trying to get the, the maximum frame rate with the best setup for esports, my recommendation would definitely be to lean towards that uh, lean into the G5 or the Omen 15Z probably.
I mean, this is still great. <laughs> like, this would certainly be really great for AAA titles, but I don't know. It's come, yeah. Oops. Okay, I'll just heal myself. Thank you. Who's got the bomb? Let's plant. Wait, did we already plant? I think we did already plant. Oh. <laughs> nice. That was a good round. <laughs> Thank you. have been watching you for five years or so on the other channel and finally found about this one. Cool, man. Well, welcome, welcome to the tech side. Yo, that headshot was nasty. <laughs> Thanks, man. I mean, I don't see as much screen tearing, but it's like if you just really look for the screen tearing, you'll notice it. Let's see what we average for FPS for a round or two here. Oh, I have the bomb. I don't want to go on my own. Someone else take the bomb. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, good thing I had my... Good thing I had my... uh, Whatever it's called. Resurrection ability. How many more? We've got two more left. I'm guessing the last person's over here. Or back at our spawn. So one person's over there. Ooh. That was a pretty nice headshot. Uh, will you be reviewing the 2021 OEMs laptops, bro? I don't think so. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The OEMs. I'm guessing that's a laptop brand for like Tongfang or something. So we're averaging 149 FPS. So I mean, I mean this laptop. There's not much noticeable input lag. It's just it. There's a little bit. Super minor. I think the bigger thing is there's a little bit of ghosting that you wouldn't see if you had a free sync or G sync display. But for a budget, I mean, this thing's. I don't know. I think the bigger thing is not that this is a bad laptop. It's just that when I look at it and I compare it to the Omen 15Z, I just think I'll tend to recommend more people to take the 15Z. Spike carrier down. Oh, goodness. Oh, got me good. Uh, so XMG is actually contemplating sending me something. You should do the CSGO with that workshop benchmark. <laughs> I will in my full benchmarks. Okay, so uh, so there you go. We're averaging we're averaging consistently above 144 FPS in Valorant. Um, I think I think you're gonna get uh, a better esports experience with the G5. But again, it's going to come down to like, you know, how premium of a laptop experience do you want? And I think that's kind of where I'm leaning towards the Omen 15Z because you'll get that premium experience plus the additional performance. But we haven't really tested the Omen 15Z. I think the TDP on the GPU might still be better on the Gigabyte G5. Okay. So if you guys really want to see Cyberpunk, I gotta I just gotta end the stream here, guys. I gotta call it. I gotta call it. I'm at the end of my streaming ability. Um so I'm sorry about not being able to do Cyberpunk, but I will be doing Cyberpunk on this machine in my full benchmarks coming up soon. Um so how do you know if a laptop has a MUX switch? 
Um, it'll be in the laptop settings somewhere. Um, it'll be in the laptop settings somewhere, somewhere in like the Armory Crate uh, or like in the MSI Dragon Center or uh, the HP Omen Center. Um, it'll be somewhere in, in those settings. Um, sometimes it's in the BIOS too, just depends. Um, but it'll be it'll be a thing that'll be like uh, switch to the dedicated GPU versus the integrated GPU, and you have to restart your machine. That's what it'll say. Um, yeah. Zephyrus Duo now available at Best Buy. Ooh, thanks, Johnny Boy. Um, I also, if you need to know if a laptop has a MUX switch, I do have it in my spreadsheet. So again, guys, there's a RTX 3000 series uh, spreadsheet. Let me just show you that one last time, and then we'll end the stream. So this, I have a column dedicated to whether stuff has a MUX or not. Um, you can see a lot of the laptops I recommend have MUXs. So up to you, um, or get Advanced Optimus. There's only a handful of laptops with Advanced Optimus, though. Um, but lots of great options here. But yeah, so this is a spreadsheet you can use to compare and shop around for laptops around your price point. So if you've got a $1,200 price point, you can compare these ones. $1,500 price point, you can compare these ones. Um, and I've, yeah, there's a lot of detail here you can you can break down. And you can sign up for notifications for when I make changes as well in the tools. So that's it for this live stream. I hope everyone found it helpful. Um, whoa, did we lose our GH5? No, we didn't. OK. Anyway, um, that's it for this live stream. I hope you guys found this helpful uh, and helping you decide between these uh, budget laptops. I definitely can recommend the Asus Tough Dash F15. I just don't know if I'll recommend it as much as I'll recommend the Gigabyte G5 and the HP Omen 15Z. Um, that said, this thing is a very premium build. It feels like, oh, I've got to take the bottom off this chassis too. Oh, we can't end this stream, guys. we got to take the bottom off. I promise to do that. <laughs> okay, let's take the bottom off. I can't end this stream before that. <laughs> Leave you guys shortchanged. Uh, where can I get the Gigabyte G5? Check the link in the description. I think you can you can order the Gigabyte G5 right now on Newegg, but it's back ordered, so they'll ship it to you as soon as they get more in stock. Um, I back ordered an Aorus 15G, and it took about uh, a week and a half for them to ship it, I think, or something like that, around 10 days. But it's just going to vary from laptop to laptop. OK, so let's take this bottom off. So sorry about that confusion there. But we're taking the bottom off, and then we're ending the live stream, OK? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think I, lo I love live streaming, but it's like it, you know how like when you're at like, let's say a party and you just get like socially like worn down from talking so much. Like that's what I feel like live streaming is um, for me, at least. That's why it's hard for me to do it too long. Um, so, OK, again, there's a link in the description down below to these iFixit toolkit. Um, I highly recommend this toolkit. It's a really good toolkit. I actually um, found the link because of Bob of all trades. If you guys are familiar with him, um, he takes laptops apart, and it's the toolkit he recommends as well. So to start off with, it looks like we have Phillips head screws. So we're going to grab the appropriate tool from the kit. Let me go ahead and raise this up a little bit more so you guys can see the whole process a little better. How's that? That looks pretty good. OK. Will I test more RTX 3060 laptops? Um, yeah, I, I have the uh, HP has agreed to send me the 3060 version of the Omen 15Z. Um, so for this screw, it looks like I'll need probably around this size of a Phillips head. Let's see if this works to cleanly, cleanly take these out. Yep. So there you go. And you can see that this is a, a magnetic screwdriver as well, which makes it super easy to take these screws out. And to keep track of them too. Um, 
Like sometimes getting the screw to actually come out of these holes can be tricky. It looks like that might be a pop-up screw, so I'm going to do that screw last. A little bit tricky to do with the camera in the way, but we can make it work. So far, these are all coming out pretty easily and consistently, which is good. I hope you can review the HP Omen 15 um, with the RTX 3060. Yeah, HP has already agreed to send me that. So I will be reviewing that one. Is this another pop-up screen? I don't think so. Let's take this one out first. My cable is going to knock these screws everywhere. Definitely don't recommend doing this with a headphone cable. I might end up losing one of these screws. <laughs> okay, let's see if this is a pop-up screw right here. So a pop-up screw causes the chassis to come up and away. Yeah, so this is a pop-up screw. It's caused a little bit of a separation in the chassis over here, which Asus has been doing this on all of their laptops I've uh, tested so far. But this allows you to get that initial chassis lift going. So let me just uh, hold that in front of you guys here so you can get a good idea of what that is. But you can see it, it separates the chassis so you can get this wedged inside there. I uh, hope you can review the Aorus 15P with uh, 20, uh, 30, 70, 130 watt. Uh, yeah, the I would love to review that, but um, I was asking Aorus about that, and they said that they're not going to, um, it sounded like they're not going to release that in the USA markets. So, because I was like, I was like, where can I buy this? I want to, I want to review this. And they were like, oh, nope. So I think we just got the other unit for the U.S. at least. Here, let me turn this camera so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So is it staying in focus okay? Cool. All right, so you want to just gently bring your tool along the edge here and try to... Gently pop the chassis bottom off. Oh wow, that the whole thing just came off. So that's very nice. Um, I don't think this has any LED wires to worry about, but if you've got um, if you've got a laptop with like a LED ribbon in front, oftentimes that will have um, a electronic connection that connects to the bottom of the chassis, like on the Strix series. So you want to be extra careful with some laptop chassis. When you're taking them apart. Cool. So uh, I can put this back now over here. And bring this back around. All right. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Okay. So I like the heat pipe design actually a lot. So for the CPU, we've got two shared heat pipes and one dedicated. Um, and that's a big fat heat pipe right there. Um, so that's a good amount of CPU cooling. In particular, if you're just doing CPU only loads, you're going to be able to access both fans uh, really well. 
the GPU has three shared heat pipes. Um, well, sorry, two two shared heat pipes, and then one dedicated to this side and one dedicated to this side. So if you're doing a GPU only load, you'll at least be able to access both of the fans at least somewhat. Um, now this one goes around the VRMs. This one goes directly to the GPU um, cover basically. So this is where the main, the main ones that'll take most of the heat off. Um, then it looks like we have one RAM here. So it's the Samsung RAM. It says, uh, this is a single rank 1R X16. Is this single channel memory? I don't, is, is it? I'm not sure. Let's take the battery off. So anytime you take anything out of the chassis, switch out the SSDs, all of that, you'll want to, uh, you'll want to unplug the battery, okay? So to do that, all you have to do is slide this little thing back and then lift up the battery. You don't pull it back, you lift it up. Um, okay, so let's take out this RAM. Take a quick look at what we got here. So single rank, single sided. You can have double sided uh, RAM, but um, I think that's where it will come into focus here. Come on. Oh, we got to do autofocus. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can see we got eight gigs of RAM. Okay. So this is a eight gig stick, 3,200 megahertz though. And um, so the other eight gigs must be soldered on because this has 16 gigs total. So we do have dual channel memory. Um, that does limit our RAM upgrade options though because we are not going to be able to do dual rank in both sides. Um, now we have an open PCIe SSD right here. And uh, well, this is the open, this is the open right here. And then this is the one that's currently installed. This is a 512 gig. And this is our Wi-Fi 6 right here. And we've got our two speaker ports right here. So our hinge chassis, or our hinge hinges right here. Very cool. Overall, I really like this heat pipe setup, especially for the price. This is a better heat pipe setup than what we have on the Gigabyte G5. And yet the Gigabyte G5 still pushes higher uh, thermal limits. Interesting, huh? I wonder if you could flash the VBIOS on this and get better performance. You almost for sure could. I wonder how high. I don't know. I'm not going to encourage you guys to do that necessarily, but I, I, I kind of wish they had made the power limits higher on this. I don't see why they limited it to only... 85 watts. I feel like it could probably go to all the way to 105 watts, no problem, based on the cooling I'm seeing in here. So just gently pushing. Wait, we didn't plug the battery back in. <laughs> we gotta take this plugger. We gotta take this sucker uh, out. <laughs> uh, what is the GPU and CPU wattage? So the the CPU wattage was, um, I believe it was pushing uh, 55 watts under a sustained load, under solo load. Um, we haven't done a stress test yet. Um, and then the GPU was pushing 85 watts. I always forget to plug the battery in sometimes. Wait, can you overclock your CPU like on desktops? Uh, it just depends. Some manufacturers let you, some manufacturers don't. But in terms of laptop overclocking, the true overclocking that's is really just increasing what the thermal limit on the the CPU is. So if you can if you can bump the thermal limit to be higher, you're going to be able to hit higher sustained clock speeds. Love your reviews, Karen Paul. Thanks. How big is the power gap between the Zephyrus and the ROG Strix? Uh, for which, you got to specify which Zephyrus. There's a Zephyrus G14, the G15, and then you got to specify which model too. Um, I'll be doing a full review on the Zephyrus G15 um, next. That's my next major video, aside from maybe the 
um, HP reverb review. Okay, so just plugging in that uh, power. The battery power again. I'll just set this back here so you guys can see me plug it back in. Okay. Is it possible to improve the cooling on this laptop? Um, yes, by uh, repasting it or buying it from a manufacturer, you know, like HID Evolution or ZTech PC that does repaste jobs. There we go. Okay, so you just gotta make sure it's pressed down and that the silver part goes over the white part there. All right, so our battery's plugged in. We should be good to put this thing back together now. Hopefully we don't lose any screws. A couple of screws dangling here. Okay. If I want to do multitasking, should I do it with the 5800H instead of the Intel 11375? Um, well, so this will be fine for just general day-to-day -day multitasking. Um, it's more, multi like, so there's a difference between multitasking and multi-core performance. So the 75800H is going to be way better for, for example, rendering video or, uh, you know, zipping things up or doing database work or coding work or whatever you know there's so many different things that could take advantage of the multi-core performance but basically anything that does multi-core performance is where you're going to see big gains for eight core cpus over this six core or these uh the four core cpu in this chassis how much ram we have 16 gigs of uh, dual channel ram in this single rank it appears Okay, we want to want to do that screw first as well because that can prevent it from going together properly. Okay. Juan David, can someone say if this laptop is good for gaming? Um, yes, this will be good for your covering all your basic gaming needs while providing a very premium laptop experience. Um, I think the bigger question is whether it'll provide better gaming performance versus the other laptops you can get at this price point. Um, I think it'll provide a really premium experience with the keyboard, the touchpad, um, but the display and the raw performance of the GPU and CPU is just going to be a little bit less than what you could get, say, in like the OMA 15Z or the Gigabyte G5. But I think I think another thing to consider is going to be, um, you know, what laptop you can actually buy right now. And I think this is one of those laptops that you're going to be able to get access to a little bit more easily than the Ryzen 5000 series, for example. Okay, so quick walk around just to make sure everything's nice and tight and then we're done okay very good all right. Okay. All right. So that's it for this live stream for real. <laughs> Thanks guys for tuning in. Um, I I don't I'm not gonna answer any more questions in the live stream. So sorry if I wasn't able to answer everyone's questions. Um, 
But uh, I did talk and answer a ton of questions throughout this live stream. So if you have some questions, you can go back uh, further back into the live stream and rewatch because I answer a lot of the questions you guys are seeing in the chat right now. Um, if you want to know what I recommend for what price point, uh, I would say take a look at my spreadsheet and linked in the video description down below. Did, did you see my last super chat about the SCAR 15? Uh, no, okay, I'll answer this because you super chat, Johnny Boy. Thanks so much for the five dollars. Well, I have you, bud. How do you feel about the Scar 15 with 30, with 5800H and 3070? I can't decide between this one and the Scar 15 5900HX with 3080. Trying to decide. Um, I think that the Scar 15 with the 3070 and 5800H is still a great system, and it'll only be a little bit slower than the 5900HX and 3080. Somewhere in the ballpark of probably. 7 to 15 percent depending on what you're doing so it's going to be very very close and whether that is going to be worth the price upgrade will depend on how much of a price difference there is between those two laptop chassis so i hope that hope that answers your questions um that's it for the stream i will uh i will stream again soon more videos coming soon so if you don't want to miss out hit that subscribe button and i appreciate it if everyone slams that like button see you in the next one brandon out huzzah